as Supreme Court clerk, Justice Stanley Reed. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, I'll tell you how I think it happened. Uh, his law clerk the year before me was Phil Graham. Phil Graham was a classmate and very close friend of mine. He had been president of the Harvard Law Review our, our year. I was book review editor. And he was Reed's law clerk. Among other things, I think he told Reed that he ought to get me. <laughs> but in addition to that, I'm sure Felix put his two cents in and told Reed the same thing. When you, did you know much about Justice Reed when you walk in the first day? I didn't walk in the first day because Justice Reed was more cautious. He had me come down to Washington to interview me one day during spring vacation. And I came down and I remembered uh, I stayed overnight at a house that was known as Hockley, which you've probably never heard of, but it had a bunch of young whippersnapper lawyers in it. And I remember the night at dinner, Joe Alsop was there for, as a guest at dinner that night. And I don't know if you ever saw or heard Joe Alsop, but he was a monologist. He took over the dinner and he talked through the entire dinner. Uh, almost as bad as Arthur Goldberg could have been. Could have been. But uh, who, who was living in the house? Well, uh, I guess that year uh, Pritchard was living in there because our, Pritchard weighed about over 300 pounds then. I remember in the middle of the night I heard a big crack and it turned out the slats on the bed Pritchard was in were broken. <laughs> but uh, he was living there. Who else was living there? Graham Clayer probably was living there that year. I don't know, people sort of moved in and out. Right. Was Dave Ginsburg part of that no. group? No. He was part of other groups, but not that group. Okay. Chief Justice at that time was... Hughes. Hughes. Uh, your impressions of Chief Justice Hughes? Well, now let's finish with the interview okay. with Reed. Sorry. Well, the Reed, inter interviews that you Reed inter was nice enough to interview me. He found nothing objectionable, and he said, come ahead. That, that's all there was to it. Okay. But This was in the nature of a double check rather well, than a derby? I think he didn't want to be in the position of taking on a law clerk he had never seen. I don't blame him for that. Right. Well, Reed worked very hard, and he didn't write easily, as I've been willing to say at print, so that if you attacked his paragraph that he had written out on a yellow pad, he would try to save as much of it as he could. He would not disagree that some of it ought to be changed, but to the extent that he could cannibalize it and save some, he would try to save it. But he was a great one to work for, because although he wasn't a brilliant man, he had astonishingly good judgment. And he was so nice to his law clerks, and this lasted all through his life. Mm -hmm. He gave them much more credit than they deserved. He was nice to them. He was always interested in what they were doing, mm -hmm. which isn't so unusual, but he was he was appreciative of what they did with him. Was he a particularly extroverted personality? or? Well, or I think a... he had been that before he got on the court. Mm -hmm. And he found that there was a little more isolation as a judge than maybe he had bargained on. Okay. okay. That happens to a lot of people. Right. Because Hughes was very busy. And uh, he was very careful with his time. Mm -hmm. And he didn't really meet any law clerk except his own. He, he just didn't have time for such things. And in, I think it was early in January, one day I went down to the, our apartment desk to pick up the mail. And Shirley said, is there any mail? And I said, yeah, there's a, an invitation from the White House. And she said, don't be silly. And I said, I'm not being silly. This is an invitation to the reception for the judiciary. And apparently, all the law clerks have been invited. And 
So, I, of course, we were going to go. And I assumed that in order to go to a formal reception at the White House, you needed to come in tails. So I rented tails. I bought a white tie. I thought that that didn't cost very much. I never used it again, and I've never had tails on again. And when I got to the White House, a third of the men were wearing tuxedos. So, but in any event, at some point along the line, Justice Reed said, would you like to meet the Chief Justice? And I said, of course we would. And he said, will you and Shirley follow me? And so we did, and he took us over to the Chief Justice. This was after everybody had finished shaking hands with Roosevelt, and, because he sat through the whole reception line. But the, uh, he took me over and he said, Chief, I'd like to introduce to you my law clerk, Bennett Bosky, and his wife, Shirley. Chief Justice was very kind and accepting the introduction. And then Hughes said, in substance, you know, he said, it's a great opportunity for a young man who's just at the beginning of his legal career to be able to be a law clerk at the Supreme Court. He said, I wish that when I was a young man, I had had such an opportunity. My wife Shirley looked him square in the eye and said, think how far you might have gone. And, <laughs> and I said, <laughs> And I started to fall through the floor, but fortunately, Hughes laughed. <laughs> That's the only time I ever met Hughes. <laughs>